You've seen it, right? A jury ruled that real estate companies were colluding and that a seller is no longer forced to offer a buyer agency fee. And with that ruling, they awarded them a boatload of money. And by them, <laughs> I really mean the attorneys because they're the ones that actually really made out in this situation. There's a lot of bad information out there. As an example, I have had a couple of people say it was the Supreme Court ruling. It wasn't. Let's get some clarification on what happened as well. Let's talk about what this could mean going forward, because there's no doubt about it. The real estate world is about to change, some for the better, and well, some of it won't be pretty. But first, real quick, my name is Jeff Chubb, and I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent, and I've sold more than a thousand houses. Let's just say man, I've been around the block or two at this point. So a quick recap, in case you were living under a rock, a group of 500,000 sellers in Missouri sued the National Association of Realtors and some real estate companies like Keller Williams, Remax, and Anywhere, which they own brands like Coldwell Banker and Century 21. The lawsuit said that National Association of Realtors and real estate agents colluded to force sellers to offer a buyer agent commission. Now, Remax and Anywhere settled, leaving National Association of Realtors, KW, and Berkshire Hathaway to fight the suit. And it didn't go well. The jury, after a mere two hours of deliberation, handed a $1.7 billion ruling that ultimately could turn into $5.4 billion in damages. A lot of agents and organizations, including the National Association of Realtors, they're saying that this verdict won't stick and that they're going to win on appeal and that that appeal, it's going to take years. And therefore, it should be business as usual. But that's not necessarily the case. Changes are already being made in the industry. But really, the big development revolves around the Department of Justice. The DOJ will soon slap a fine and force changes long before this appeal shakes out. That's my bet. My bet's that it's going to happen within the next year. So let's fast forward and talk about what this means for you as a buyer and seller today, and then talk about how I see this playing out in the distant future. Let's first focus on what it means as a seller. Now, the first is that you're interviewing an agent, and they say their fee's 5% or 6% or whatever they are, lumping the buyer agent fee and the seller agent fee together. Then they're doing it wrong. It could, quite frankly, be in some trouble. They need to be presenting the information, well, quite frankly, like I've been doing it for at least a decade now. You as a seller need to pick the marketing package that you would like to choose for selling your house and then choose how much you'd like to offer that buyer agent. It could be zero. It could be 2%. It could be 4%, whatever you as a seller want. Now, the immediate place this makes a big change to is on the buyer's side. The argument that agents made in regards to buyer representation being free was always BS. But real estate agents have been saying this for years. In truth, it's always been my belief that the buyer is paying not only their agent, but the seller agent as well. How could that be, you ask? Well, in the past, the seller has been paying both those agents with whose money? Again, yeah, it's the buyer's money. But the way that it is charged, that might change. Like those attorneys that just took 30 to 40% of that $5.3 billion, real estate agents work on contingency as well. In other words, they only get paid when the end result is delivered. And because of that contingency, the agent compensation needs to be higher in order to compensate for the risk of investing time and resources with a person that may not ultimately end up buying or selling a house. And that means that agent does not get compensated for that time and the resources that they used. If a buyer uses an agent, then that agent will still demand to be compensated. It makes sense, right? After all, this is a business, not a community service. They have a family to feed and need to put a roof over their head. But now a buyer will have to pay that agent directly. And here's where it gets tricky. The buyer most likely doesn't have an extra 10 grand just sitting around to pay for that agent. They could finance it, but that would have to be worked in the deal. And that could cause some financing issues. In the very short term, all agents will require a buyer agency contract for all buyers that they're working with. This alone will drastically improve the transparency on how the fee works and therefore will greatly improve the industry. The fee structure will be laid out and presented at the initial buyer meeting. It will be explained that whatever the agent and the buyer has agreed to as fair representation will be negotiated with the seller at the time of the offer. And anything that the seller is not willing to cover will need to be covered by the buyer. Undoubtedly, this will cause some buyers to go directly to a seller's agent. And therefore, they will be unrepresented in the deal. And this will end up being a boon for a seller. A high percentage of these buyers, well, they're going to lose and lose big. Now, where I see the buyer agency market going is the market providing buyers with two options. 
These options are similar to when someone uses an attorney. They could pay up front and thereby the total fees will be less or they can choose to work off a contingency where the fee will be higher. So let's make up some numbers. Maybe it's $250 an hour with an upfront $2,000 retainer for buyer agent representation. How involved do you want that agent to be in the process? Do you want them at every single showing? If so, then that's going to cost you. Maybe you want them at the second showings because you did a bunch more legwork and saw a bunch of houses during open houses. Oh, but in the future, open houses might not exist like they do now. But we will get to that in a moment. Or maybe you only want the agent to consult on pricing. Write up the offer and do the negotiations. You get the point. The consumer gets to choose how much they want to pay based on how much direction they want from their agent. And agents will have different fees. An experienced agent that has sold thousands of houses, as an example, will probably charge more than an agent who's newly licensed. And if they decide to not end up buying a house, then that's okay. No harm, no foul. That's their decision. And the agent has been compensated for their time and their efforts. Or... Maybe the buyer decides they want the agent to work on contingency. And it's agreed that when the buyer buys a house that the agent will be compensated, say, 2.5% of the purchase price, which could be built into the deal as close to the cost assistance, which would be paid by the seller. No upfront funds are paid, and if the buyer doesn't end up buying a house, then they don't owe anything. Very similar to today's structure. Except that it would be negotiated at the time of the offer. It's a simple risk and reward equation. The current system is high risk for the agent and therefore high reward. I think the new system will be a sliding scale where the buyer ends up getting to choose. I think if that's where it ends, then it is a win for all parties. But I don't think that's where it's going to end. I think it's going to continue to evolve from there. Now we're getting into a bunch of what ifs and hypotheses. And that's really easily the most unfactual thing I've ever said in all my videos. And I hate not talking about specific data points and the what-ifs of the worlds, but here we go because things, they've changed a lot. The good news is me being able to point to some fast data points is what I'm really pinpointing my belief on to as to what the future holds based on what has actually happened back in history. I'm going back to the 80s and looking at what the real estate market used to look like back then. This was before a lawsuit was filed and won, which ended up creating buyer agency in the first place. Isn't it ironic? It was a lawsuit that created by our agency and ultimately a lawsuit that's going to end it. So one of the first things is that the National Association of Realtors, it's done so. It's gone. And while everyone thinks that this organization was for us agents, that's BS. That organization didn't care about us agents. They had us locked in based on collusion between them and the real estate brokers. The needs of us agents, that was their last thought. But for everything that organization wasn't, they were extremely pro-consumer pro-consumer almost at the extent of their true customer, us agents. As a homeowner, I know you love the interest deduction on your mortgage every single year and the capital gains tax exemption on your house. You know, the one that says the first 250 grand is tax deductible for an individual and up to 500,000 for a married couple. I personally love the $8,000 tax credit I got when I bought my first house back in 2008. This credit is one of the things that has actually been contributed to turning around our real estate market as well as our economy back then. Well, all of those things that I just mentioned are thanks to the National Association of Realtors, and they won't be there anymore. There will be no organization fighting for the special interests of us homeowners. So the first thing to go will be the interest deduction on our taxes, then that capital gain deduction. Because in each and every single budget battle, politicians are always first to go to the elimination of the interest deduction as a way to increase revenue. But it was the power of what used to be the largest trade union in the country and the most powerful lobbying arm in the country in all the money they spent on buying all of those politicians that protected those deductions and our special interests as homeowners. Again, the National Association of Realtors, they won't be there to fight and protect those deductions. So those are gone. And they are gone very quickly. We can call that an opinion, but I pretty much chalk that one up to fact, quite frankly. Buyer agency in general, it's going to disappear. It'll go back to the days in the 80s where buyers didn't have any representation. Everyone worked for the seller. And that agent that the buyer thinks they have working for them will be working as a facilitator and not in the capacity of the buyer. And the seller will pay a minimal fee for that facilitation service. Because of the disappearance of the competitive compensation on the buyer's side, then ultimately... That means the value of the buyer lead is drastically reduced. Fun fact, did you know that a Zillow lead in the back bay 
would cost me as an agent more than $1,500 per lead. That's not per closing. That's per lead. Us agents won't be willing to pay the Zillow's of the world a premium for near worthless leads, which means the property syndication that we have now will ultimately disappear. It's a simple rule. If you aren't paying anything, then you are the product, just like Facebook. We don't pay anything, and therefore, they sell our information to marketers. Us Facebook users are the product. Well, when you use Zillow, they are selling your information to us agents. You are the product. And in the new world, that info becomes completely worthless. But that isn't actually Zillow or Realtor.com or any of those other big sites' biggest problem. Their biggest problem actually lies with the multiple listing service and it not really existing because the MLSs in the country have a huge headwind coming at them. The first is a drastic cut in the agent count. It's us agents that actually pay monthly fees to keep these services going. These fees then store all this data, which is then fed to all those beautiful house websites that consumers visit each and every day. With the quartering or halving of real estate agents, these MLSs will not be able to exist. There will have to be a mass consolidation of multiple listing services and a mass cutting of resources in order to be able to survive. Their second and biggest risk is the rise of the pocket listing. These were very prevalent in how the real estate market operated in the 80s. With the removal of the MLS, you have removed the motivation of an agent-to-agent -agent cooperation. Slowly but surely, agents will put fewer and fewer houses on these MLSs and have them as inner office listings. Don't believe me? Go take a look at the industrial market and see how they operate. It would be like back in the 80s when you had to go down Main Street and stop in at each office to see what they had for listings. Except tomorrow, you'll have to stop by each office's website rather than their Main Street office address to see their pocket inventory. And this is where the consumer really loses because in the end, it's the consumer that gets really hurt by a change of the current model. The lower income buyer is, well, quite frankly, really screwed. They won't be able to afford enough front buyer fees. So they're going to go directly to the seller's agent and have no one protecting their best interests. And all buyers will be affected by the reduction and then the elimination in the free flow of information. All those consumer sites will slowly but surely start disappearing. Or maybe not disappearing altogether. I could see where Zillow starts charging me as a listing agent to list their house on their website and then charge more for a premier status, and then more for a listing video, and so on. And by the way, those are all charges which I'm going to pass along to the consumer. The point is, the consumer loses because the information is not going to be as readily available. Without the big reward, you will see less and less business happening on the weekends and the evenings as well. The model will turn closer to the European real estate model, where Business is done on the weekdays between 9 and 5. Again, if you aren't paying an agent tens of thousands of dollars to represent them on a property, then that agent will not be at the beckoning call during downtime. In Europe, if you want to look at a house, then it's considered a serious process, and thereby you take time off work and look at houses during the day and during the week. And with that, there will be no more weekend open houses. And in the end, the seller loses because they're not going to be able to jump onto Zillow to see what their neighbor's house sold for, or at least jump onto Zillow for free. They won't be able to see what the fit and finish of that neighbor's house was and will have less information to help determine the true market value of their house. They won't be able to do the research that they can do today. And you know who will have all of that data? The neighborhood real estate agent. And in the end, the real estate agents who are left standing, they're going to be more valuable. The value of the real estate agent drastically increases. It's going to take some time to get there. It's going to drastically narrow down the field and eliminate a good three quarters of the amount of real estate agents in the country. This will eliminate competition of not only agents, but also a lot of real estate companies will go out of business with there being a lot of consolidation. The elimination of the competition, plus being the ones that control information, will only end up increasing a real estate agent's value and the real estate company's value. At least the agent and the companies that make it to the end, that is. And agents, again, history repeating itself here. In all of that transition that I just talked about, through all of that, it is the real estate company that begins to start gaining massive leverage over us agents. I feel like we all long for the past, and the good news is that we're all going to get to live it in real time soon enough. It will take some time for it all to play out, but there's no doubt there is a lot of change coming. And on that note, I'm personally excited for the future, and I fully embrace it. That's why for any and all of my clients, 
sellers or buyers. From this point forward, they can choose to work with me on a contingency basis or on an hourly basis. And heck, if you're a buyer and you're paying me on an hourly basis, then that means that the seller on the house that you are buying is offering a commission, then that entire commission will revert to you. All of my contact information, it's in the description below. Otherwise, you can visit youtuberealestateagent.com and fill in your information, and then my team and I, we're going to reach out to you. Until next time.